Welcome once again to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. The questions and conversations concerning what happened in Ikoyi in Lagos on Monday, um, you know, continue, of course, to come left and right. It, it, the, the questions are, are never ending, basically. The Lagos State Governor yesterday, of course, made mention that there's a committee that has been set up. He, of course, uh, named certain members of the committee that would look into the incident and try to figure out exactly who should be held responsible and what exactly happened uh, to prevent a, you know, another occurrence of uh, such a very, very terrible incident. We're speaking this morning with a concrete technologist. His name is Mr. Collins Balogun, who has a lot of experience with regards architecture and building. Uh, good morning, Mr. Balogun. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, good morning, guys. How are you guys doing today? Very well, thank you. Yes, we are. All right, so, um, of course, you know, like I've said, there's so many questions that, you know, need to be asked, you know, right from what may have led to this disaster. Uh, of course, there's going to be questions concerning, you know, is, is a 15-story uh, building, uh, or it was meant to be a 15-story building, and then eventually was pushed to 20 or 21 Everyone is, you know, asking these questions. But I want, to, you know, you to speak with regards what you think could have led to the collapse of this building. Um, is it a failure of the structure? Is it a failure of the foundation? Failure of the type of materials that were used? Is it too much pressure that was placed? I, I really have no idea. But let's have your views on what are the possible, uh, the possibilities, you know, that could have played out here. Okay. Um... Good morning once again. Um, I think um, it could be, you know, all those uh, reasons stated and uh, much more uh, other reasons. As a matter of fact, there are a thousand and one reasons why um, a building, uh, you know, can collapse. But um, I will bring all the reasons, you know, and um, put it under just uh, two reasons. The first one is uh, ignorance. The second one is greed. Ignorance and so, greed. So those are the two major reasons why you have building collapse. That, I mean, you can now break all those down to, you know, so many um, technical, topo uh, topographical, and, um, and um, approval reasons. But um, the reasons, you know, for any building collapse can be summarized into two. And they can be either greed or ignorant. Okay. Um, if we are talking about greed, what uh, could happen? It, um, that it, it simply means that okay, um, the developer knows what to do, but as a result of uh, managing cost or costing costs, choose not to do it. You know, when we are talking of greed, you know, you know the approval processes. You know, you're supposed to get and um, you choose to, you know, have your way around that because you want to maximize profits or you want to, you, you want to cut corners. And um, the other one, which you call ignorance. See, um, building, public building uh, especially, or a high-rise building requires a lot, a whole lot of technical competence. You bring in, you know, professionals when it is high rise. Uh, when when, you, when your project is is a high rise, maybe starting from even from um, third floors, professionals has to be the one doing their job. But unfortunately, what do we have? You know, we have people who who who, who rely so much on their level of experience of being in this industry for thirty two years. Then and I ask them, have you ever seen an auxiliary nurse, okay, conducting uh, surgery? Absolutely not. Have you, have, have you ever seen um, a, a law firm clerk, uh, clerk going to court to, court to defense uh, an accused? It doesn't work. You have to let professionals do their job from, you know, starting from the soil tests. You know, some of the things um, um, the public do not know, a building can collapse as a result of a poor or compromised soil test. I have seen it before. Because um, before you, you put your building on, uh, the, the geoethnics uh, consultant have to come and conduct what we call uh, soil tests. 
if they are conducting the toy, uh, soy test and the soy samples are not picked at random, it could cause a problem. And some of these company, you know, they send, you know, an IT staff or, or NYC guys who doesn't have an experience to go and pick sample from the site. You know, I've seen it hap uh, happening before. And because of this, I always advise uh, people that we consult for that always use two companies for your soil tests. One will do the primary soil test, while the other cross-reference, whatever the first one did. Okay? Because, you know, soil strata can be different. You, you may have maybe a plot of, um, say, um, 1,000 square meters now, and the soil strata or the soil structure, it will have about five, seven, ten different soil structures. And you want to um, do a uniform piles or different piles, you know, based on the soil test results. All right? So the soil test is number one. It has to be comprehensively and forensically done. So if the first company, you know, conducted the, conduct the, the soil test, you should, I mean, a hundred or two hundred thousand will not kill you for an, for another soil uh, test consultant to cross reference whatever the person has done. Remember, this is million dollars project. Yeah. So you spending that amount of money will not be too much because uh, failure or poor interpretation of soil structure, you know, can 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 lead to this. Okay. Well. Well. Um so, so that's on you know on the soil level, like because I, I, I'm yes. completely ignorant with regards architectural mm -hmm. and building terms. <laughs> but that's on the soil level. As we go higher in this building, what are the things that you know could also be be challenges? Um, you know, I've seen you know people also talk about you know the the um, whether they're using metal metal poles or or they're using mm -hmm. bamboo, um, you know, to set up the the structure all the way up. How important are these factors here and there? Right. Um, the next most important thing is the type of foundation. The soil test will determine the type of foundation you do. Meanwhile, it is generally, you know, assumed that the higher your structure, the deeper the foundation should be. There are two types of foundation. Basically, you know, there are, there are, uh, there is, uh, or there are, uh, um, what we call a um, shallow foundation, and um, there are deep foundation. Okay, if you are going on high rise and you have a good soil structure or a good soil, you can go on um, a, a shallow foundation, but you're going to increase number of piles. I mean, these are all the work of structural engineers. Yeah. Even though I'm a concrete technologist, I do not have the competence, uh, the competency. I mean, there are core professionals, just as we have in medical world. You have general practice doctor, you have surgeon, you have, you know, all sorts. So a, a, a general practice surgeon, I mean, a general practice doctor is not, is, is not, is not requested or is, is not required to do a, a, a surgery. You have a surgeon. Okay, so and that's how it is. And when you come to what people see as building, that is um, what what you see from the first floor, the second floor, you know, the the specialists also they are the one that is going to design the building. Meanwhile, after you install your pile, you are going to do something what we call a uh, load tests on your pile. Okay, it's just like you going to doctor now, or I want to give you. I want to give you a load to carry, you know, um, and I do a BMI test for you, body mass index tests. That okay, I want to see your height, I want to see your bone framework, and at the end of the day, I will look at you. Okay, you can only carry two kg load. Yes. See, everything you see above the the, the soil, we call it dead loads. Okay, we call it dead loads. So you have to do pressure, you have to pressure test your piles and see that it can actually carry the load you want to put on it. Now, when you get to the surface, these are all the, these are all the work of uh, uh, structural consultants and the law require that all those processes are documented. 
See, they are documented and cross-referenced. Okay, now, when you now get to the first floor, the second floor, there are so many determinants, but chief among them are, number one, the type of reinforcement you use is also going to be specified by your structural consultant. If they tell you use 22, you know, 22 mm reinforcement bar, a ton can cost you like, you know, for purpose, for the purpose of a, uh, it can cost you 1,200. But 15 mm bar will call you, will cost you 650 naira. 11 mm uh, bar can cost you 350 naira. This is, I mean, those are the places that developers or people who grid control. Cost. Yeah, according cost. So if it's on the specification that use 15 mm, you know, reinforcement bar, don't use 11 mm. It has implication because they are the one that has done all the uh, the load calculation. Yeah, but 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 I'm sure that you know while they are investigating this, you know they will be able to figure out um, the millimeter, you know the bars, you know that were used for this particular project. And if they De were definitely, adequate. definitely, mm -hmm. all of oh, okay. all of all of that is going to all of that is going to be done. Okay, but so let's they, let's look at another fact, Torgan. Uh, just as you have mentioned, because we're just also trying to dig deep and understand what could be uh, responsible for the collapse of that, you know, structure and building. Now, on the other hand, you have some quotas saying that there's always, you know, some compromise on the side of, uh, on the side of, you know, government official who should be, you know, who should give the approval, who should give the go ahead for these structures to be erected. So uh, what are your thoughts? R right now, uh, you have words on the street saying, yes, it's possible that maybe uh, those agencies that are created by government uh, to give, you know, the building permits, the pl town planning and what have you, probably would have compromised and we would not be here. I'd like to share your thoughts on that. Right. Uh, for me personally, I will tell you this, intention matters, okay? No matter how much of control you put in place, if the party involved does not have good intention, it's very difficult, you know, for any government or anybody to do anything. I mean, <laughs> you have a husband and wife at home, and the husband still go out to cheat, or the wife still go out, and the any of the... Either the spouse will not know why, because intention. Okay, what is most important is that the developer, whosoever that is in charge of the project, has a right intention. I, I made mention of this. Right intention is the most paramount. Now, on the of, of, you know on the side of the government, I will say, you know, uh, Lagos State government they have the the best or the most potent building control um, uh, 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 parastata in the whole of Nigeria. They are doing a whole lot. However, you know, just like um, when we watch, um, what do you call it, a plane has an accident, they will investigate and learn from it and integrate lesson learned into the process. The government has to look at the whole process, you know, of a building approval end to end, you know, and they have to look at the processes again. Um, from my own experience and understanding, if you want to build um, the high-rise building, you have to invite the Lagos State um, building collapse, you know, they will come and take your cube tests, you know, the structural engineer will have to um, submit reinforcement, that is the tensile stretch report for the reinforcement all of this has to be documented, submitted to the government. Now, the next question is, are these things really done? That's number one. Number two, are they, you know, are they, are they, um, are they, uh, are they done on site? What I'm trying to say is that, you know, even when Lagos State um, building collapse are board, come to your site, to pick sample, to pick your concrete cube sample, for instance, they can make that batch to meet requirements. Okay? And the subsequent one, when these guys have left, you know, can be compromised. And that's why I say intention matters. Okay? But at the same time, 
I think the government has to put in, in uh, put in place more stringent measure. Okay, what I call checklists, right? For ev from every step on the way, you know, they have to, you know, they, they, they have to be checking the building. When they get to the second floor, they tell them to stop and do an integrity test, you know, before they move on. This is very important. Well, of course, this. The, yeah, go, go ahead. Go ahead. You, you can wrap up. Yes, of course, these are the primary responsibilities of our. Uh, structural consultants and architects on the project. When you design a building, for for instance, as a structural consultant, you take all these uh, um, all um, all these tests, you know, you you and you you file them and submit them to to the government. But in a situation where recommendations and specifications of structural consultants are not being adhered to, okay, in such situation, there is nothing they can do. They can do, or, or I mean, the last, the last thing they can do is to write. Okay, they will write that. Okay, you did not adhere, or the sample we pick on this uh at this particular floor does not um does not fall into our specification, or the tensile strength, or this, the tensile strength of reinforcement you are using at this particular point in time falls short, fall below. Therefore, we cannot guarantee. As okay. ad, when they do that, they absorb of any fault because actually the the responsibility is on the structural engineer. But oh, at this juncture, let me say yeah, uh, it's not just the structural engineer. You know, um, there are agglomerations of professionals. For instance, uh, the the cost estimators, the architects, and of course um, the the concrete technologists. Okay. We analyze concrete and tell and tell you, okay, at this particular point in time, these are the type of concrete you'll be using. Okay, self is and it's an SS concrete, is a um a high performance concrete, you know, and all of that. But when all these are thrown away, you say, No, come off it. I've been doing this in 32 years. Before you were born, you know, I've been doing this. Then things like these are inevitable. All right, <laughs> Mr. Balogu. Um, I, I also want you to tell us, you know, from your experience, um, what you can tell from the way that this particular building collapsed. Um, I've also, I've seen, I think when I was watching the 9-11 investigation, um, the analysis then, you know, were speaking about, you know, if a building collapses all the way down or crumbles on its, on its own, you know, then there's certain ways or, you know, there's things that you can tell from that. If it falls sideways, there's also things that you can tell from that. And maybe if it, you know, only collapses halfway, I, I really have no idea. Um, but what can you tell from this particular one, you know, that could be the likely cause of the, of the collapse? Because it seems to just have fallen all the way down on, its, on itself. Um, what can you tell? Would it be different um, or would the, your analysis be different if the building had fallen sideways um, or anything? Okay, um, I've not I've not done a deep or forensic, uh, you know, analysis of the video. But what I can tell you is that um, building doesn't just wake up one morning and collapse. Okay, except if it is bumped. Yes. Okay. Yes. Before a building collapse, you will have seen the sign. Right? You will have seen the sign. You know, it's just like before you faint, you before you faint, you like you'll be palpitating, you'll be sweating, and one of the signs you see are structural cracks playing out in the building, right? Because uh, there are so many types of cracks. There, 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 there is, there is, we have one we call a shrinkage cracks. Shrinkage cracks is a result of um, cracks that occur as a result of curing of your concrete or screeds or cementitious element that's shrinkage cracks we have airline cracks then we now have structural cracks structural cracks are those cracks are those cracks that are above five mm so the moment you are seeing cracks that are above mm on your concrete now not on the mortar screen this time around on your concrete you need to bring in professionals to investigate okay you need in you need to bring in professionals to investigate but in so many cases what do you see when there are structural cracks you see people they, they patch it up right they patch it up um, um some years ago someone called me 
you know, about this, uh, someone calls us regarding this. And we just did a simple test and told him that it's better you bring this building down. This building is seeking. And thank God the man is, 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 is a man who has good intention. He brought down the building. I mean, the building is just on third floor. What did we do? When we got to that place, we just, just a broom of all that are, that are scientific, um, um, they say you can, you can use so, to analyze if your structure is failing, you know, or not. But we insert, we inserted a uh, broom and folded paper into those, into those uh, cracks. And three days, you know, we forcefully inserted there. Three days, we came back and checked. Lo and behold, the folded brooms or paper, you know, are loose. In other words, settlement is still taking place. Yes. Settlement is still taking place. I mean, this is, I mean, this is a street. This is, we pick this from street or by experience. So, say, so, so this one, from, from what you're saying, you, you can't necessarily tell um, what may have led to this one uh, or this uh, particular collapse. If it is um, a bad structure, a bad, bad foundation, poor building materials, um, you know, improper use of, of um, you know, the, the poles that you mentioned um, earlier. It, it can't be, you can't tell, you know, just by looking at the way that this one uh, crashed or collapsed. I don't think there is anybody that can do that. You have to do thorough investigation. I mean, and, and it is too early to just say, okay, it's as a result of a bad, you know, poor workmanship, not adhering to specification or, or and all of that. But based on what you have on, you know, information you pick on the street is possibly as a result of um, excess load. I mean, when a building is designed, whosoever designed a building, you know, have a have a reason or have something in mind designing the building. For instance, I can design a building and say, I want this building to last for 100 years. I want this building to last for 300 years. That will determine, you know, the type of parameters or the type of things I'm going to specify on such building. But if a structural consultant design a building and say this building is going to be 15th floor or 14th floor, and I designed it to last for 200 years. So, and if it is taken to 21 floor, it's just like, okay, after I check your BMI, I say you are going to carry 5 kg load and they not put 20 kg load on you. I, would, I don't expect that if I said you are, uh, you are carrying 5 kg load and you are going to walk 6 kilometers, if you carry 20 kg load, you are going to walk, walk less than 2 kilometers. That's what I mean. Uh, for just to analyze, I, I want to believe that could have been what happened here. Okay. So, until thorough investigation is done, I mean, nobody, no professional can just lay hands on it and say, okay, this is what caused, uh, your, this is what made the building to collapse. All right, so let's now talk about what uh, is required. I mean, for instance, I'm sure that a lot of persons would you know, in the nearest future want to have, you know, such structures. Uh, as an expert and a professional, what procedures should be observed uh, to erect such a structure? Okay, thank you very much. Um, the procedure is very simple. Use the professionals. Make, I mean, make yourself available of latest information out there. For instance, ensure that <clears throat> your, your building are what height. Okay, ensure that your buildings are watertight, ensure that um, well, there are no water seepages, so you have to use waterproofing additive. Ensure that you use concrete additive to increase the strength of your concrete. It's going to save you cost. Ensure that structural engineer or structural consultant is the one that build, I mean, is the one that design uh, your building, adhere to specification. When you adhere to specification and make use of structural consultants you have transferred the risk to them okay because this is not this is not this is not your 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 your, your profession they are the ones that are professional and when they advise you when you when you follow the advice if anything happened to the building you have transferred the risk to them you know on on, on this case now for if the structural consultant 
uh, specification is adhered to, then is the structural consultant that will be your head liable. But above all, you have to be proactive. Think ahead. Okay, what could have been the cost? One of the things I wanted to I wanted to say here now it also is that see, when you bring in maybe a structural consultant from Italy, you know, a structural consultant from United States, of course they are sound, of course they are international, of course they are good. But how about understanding the topography of Nigeria? There are some things that are very particular to our own climate here, which they may not understand, which people who hear over the over the years of practice. You know, they they, 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 they they take in, therefore they, therefore they can guide you through it. So for whosoever that want to build high rise, you know, we advise that they make use of professionals. Ask for, you know, advice. Let professionals take the risk of you. It's, it's as simple as that. There's uh, some people who say, oh, it's, it's very expensive and all of that. If you need a professional, you know, a professional service, then you expect that at least you are going to pay a little more. You know, if with buildings or concrete, just as we used to say back in school, concrete have life, building have life. Building are just like human beings. Okay, you need to check them, test them, you know, you know, uh, from time to time. So if you want to build or the yeah, developer, of course, our, our friends in the industry, there are a lot of developers that are doing fantastic things. And, you know, they come, they go to professionals, they ask for advice. As a matter of fact, some we put two, three professionals, you know, on their, on their side so that to avoid, you know, things like this. Because the truth is that the, what you are going to pay professional is very, very minor compared to you know, uh, mopping the, the type of mess that has happened now. Yeah. Um, so Mr. Ba Mr. Balogun, should we be... Yeah, not same thing. Yes. Should there be concerns um, with regards to the buildings next to the one that collapsed? Um, should those ones now also be looking or be watched very, very closely, uh, you know, because of what has happened? Of course. I mean, that is the truth. I mean... The, the site is going to, the, the, the government is going to seal up the site now. Not just the immediate building, all the buildings around, because um, one, of the, one of the biggest enemy of any high-rise structure is vibration. The level of vibration that um, the building collapse has caused now and adversely affect those around. So, and I'm very sure the government are going to do integrity tests on all the building and high-rise around. I mean, that is no-brainer. It's, it's, it's going to be done. And, and, and these aren't things that should be compromised or should be, you know, overlooked. They are, they are extremely important, Mr. Balogun. Definitely. Now, when you have vibrations, there, there, there is high tendency you are going to have major cracks playing out. Okay? So, I mean, there are a lot of parameters that government is going to, um, the, the investigators, the committee is set up, they are, going to, they are going to check. Okay? If you now have major cracks, maybe the foundation of such building has been compromised as a result of the vibration or the impact or the fall of the, 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 the high rise, I mean, the one that has happened. Yes. There is no, I mean, there won't be any other option than to bring those buildings down. Oh, wow. All right. So, um, the, there's something, you know, like you've rightly mentioned, you're saying that uh, thorough investigation needs to be carried out, you know, to ascertain what the cause uh, what actually led to the collapse of that building and we're hoping that you know the government and you know those concerned would you know walk up to that or would live up to expectation right but let's also look at something that the state government has actually done in a bid to limit the frequency of collapse building or collapse incident in lagos the government has decided to launch or rebrand uh, i mean launch a rebranded certificate of completion and fitness uh, that's to safeguard the lives of the people. Do you think that that's effective enough? Do you think that that particular action or this would actually uh, help in solving the problems of collapse building and structures in the nearest future? Well, um, I want to believe it, but um, the truth of the matter, you know, just as I reiterated uh, earlier on, is the intention. We, we are all Nigerians and we know what is happening. You know, people can always have their way when the intention is not right. I mean, um, I landed this, but this particular building was, you know, was closed or sealed off for some months. 
what happened why was it reopened you know i i mean you can say okay the integrity test is conducted are you sure it's not paper integrity tests right so like i said in this part of the world intention is number one thing when your intention is right if government put a stringent um processes in place you're ready to go through it even above and beyond what government put in place so number one is intention okay when lagos government is saying uh, they want to you know reevaluate and overhaul you know I, I think that that's necessary you know because there are there are still some uh, some things that has to be integrated for 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 instance in uh, <clears throat> in istanbul in uh, germany see you you don't you don't for in waterlogged area you you use waterproofed concrete not just mass concrete and the level of uh, waterproofing has you know there is a code that uh, takes care of that yeah in this part of the world we do not have that yet but what we have if people have right intention of using it we are never going to have i mean we are never going to see this type of a thing so L let's assume the, the intention let's assume that the intention is going to be right do you think it will work do you think that that's uh, you know way of curtailing uh, collapse building yes it will if the intention is right definitely it's going to work it will work i i am i'm i'm very certain of that look um what i what what, what i was um uh, telling some of some of my friends yesterday i said um Lagos state government they need to do more you know, when it comes to revenue generation, you have no way of escape. Uh, Lagos state, you cannot escape it. But when it comes to preservation of lives and property, why are people escaping? Right? Why are people escaping? So the, what the government needs to do more. Yes, they are doing a whole lot. They let nobody deceive you. The government of Lagos state, they are doing a whole lot. But they need to do more. So they need to rejiggle the processes, put more control measures. And if we don't have total elimination, at least we're going to have reduced building collapse in Nigeria. All right. Um, now, let's, let's look at what currently is going on um, at the um, site. Um, I, I've been questioning, you know, the rescue efforts that are currently going on over there. Um, I'm sure you've also seen videos. You've seen those clips and pictures. Um, do you think that it, it, it is done, it is being done the right way, you know, from what you're aware of? Um, do you think that there's more that they probably should be, be doing in order to, you know, have a chance of saving lives? Well, that, that, that question is um, neither here nor there. Um, and um, expected and the reality. We make use of what we have. Oh, maybe in another climb they will have, um, you know, what do you call it, all sorts of paramedics in place. You know, you yes. have, you know, helicopter, uh, sniffing doors, uh, you know, and all of such. But what do we have? You know, um, yes, it could be better. You know, I mean, we can have um, all this thing in place, but we don't have them now. And um, with the best they are doing, we, we have to encourage them you know, to do more. I mean, I criticizing and say, no, 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 this is rubbish. This is, the, I mean, they are doing their best, you know, based on, the, um, based on um, equipment and what is available, you know. And um, emergency rescue in Lagos has been phenomenal compared with other states, okay? So we have to give it up to, we have to give it up to Lagos. They are trying, but can they do more? The answer is yes, right? When, you're, when you score three out of 10, you know, it, it, it's still a mark. It's better than those that, that didn't come to school at all. So we need to encourage the government to do more. Can, can there be a better rescue um, uh, uh, um, procedure? Process? Method or pr procedure? The answer emphatically is yes. The answer is yes. But we need to encourage the government to do more. Absolutely. You know, and and I'm, I'm really just hoping that we... we Hear some good news um, because every single day that passes and every minute uh, counts for those who are still buried under that rubble um, and fighting for a chance to stay alive. Every single minute pa that passes is very, very important. So I'm hoping that, yes, you know, would encourage the Lagos State government to continue to do what it should do. Um, but, you know, that there is some miracle and more people are brought out of that rubble alive.
Um, the questions will continue, you know, and, and I, I, I know that we'll eventually also get to the question with regards Lagos State itself and the way that the, 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 uh, these areas are set up um, with regards rescue and emergencies. Um, for, for example, when this happened on Monday, I was in traffic in Ikoi when it happened, and um, I know that it took an hour, maybe up to two hours, before proper rescue equipment eventually got there, and, and that's not encouraging in any way. Um, so a lot of these questions will continue to be asked, you know, somehow, some way. Um, is there a little bit more that you can share with us concerning the quality of building materials that are found in Nigeria? Um, is this something that also is a problem that is not spoken about enough? Yeah, um, the quality of building material, of course, um, is is uh, is, um, is one of the of the reason. But um, just like I, I tell people that ask me, you know, just like um, if you go to the market, you can buy some clothes. A yard will be six hundred and. There's clothes, a yard will be 7,500, okay? So, I mean, you can buy a car for half a million or a million. You can buy a car for 20, 25 million. So, but if you are the one that's going to, you know, choose, specify that, okay, this is the quality of what I want. When it comes to high-rise building, government, you know, have a measure, an expectation, which is carried out by structural consultants. For instance, the reinforcement, you know, which is responsible for the tensile strength of the building. Before re procurement or purchase of reinforcement, the, the, the structural consultant will insist that they pick sample of that reinforcement and go and test the strength and the lab. Okay? And if it falls below the expected strength, they are not going to use it, okay? So, building material, the quality of building material uh, out there, yes. I mean, nine yards, there are poor, there are good ones, and there are premium, okay? There are premium, and that's how it is all over the world. You know, that's how it is. Um, but the, 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 the whosoever that is developing must now choose. But at the same time, you know, there are, modern technologies you know like um concrete additives like waterproofing additives you know like um um injections silanes and organized silanes injections into concrete and buildings that is good that can help all right there are quality building material in the market and there are fake the choice is on everyone that wants to build, either you go for fake or for quality. Of course, I know that government has a, a, a role to play by regulating, ensuring that the, the quality of building material brought to the market, you know, meet a particular um, level of, uh, you know, a, a level of uh, quality. But at the same time, the choice is on everyone that wants to build to act, try as much as possible to, you know, to go for the quality one. And how do you go for the quality one? Before you buy, ask for the for certificates, you know, the, the, the certificate of quality, um, ISO or SO, uh, or SON. And also pick, yeah, and also pick sample, go to lab, uh, go to lab and have them tested, okay? For us now, for every cement we bought, we have to pick sample, we go and do lab analysis before there's stringent uh, quality control in our facility before we bring them in. Because, I mean, funny enough, the quality the quality varies, right? The quality varies. So we won't say it's one-off thing, weekly thing, monthly thing. No, every batch thing, every batch, we subject them to quality tests. If it passes, we we'll take them in. If it does not pass, we we'll reject them to whosoever that supply. Even to the sand, the silica sand, we get we subject them to stringent quality, you know, uh, measurement. And this is what we are going to recommend for every one of us. I mean, you have to do this. This is the only way you can get in. You can get uh, You can get good and quality material into your in, into your project. 
Okay, so like um, just to, you know, both of us, uh, your point again, uh, I know that you have mentioned that, yes, government has a role of regulating, and then you also have it on those who are building developers and all of that to ensure that they get the right material. But at whose end do we control? At whose end should we stop it? At whose end should we ensure that we don't get to this point? So should it be on the part of government or on the people? Who should we, um, you know, at whose end should all of this stop at? Okay, I mean, there are, uh, there are sequence to these oversight function, primary functions, okay? Um, the government is the regulatory, the big, the big boss, the regulatory body, but the consultant is there to ensure that government regulatory uh, um, expectations are carried out, right? They are carried out. For instance, now with great concrete by um, mega, pas uh, mega Pascal MPAs, okay, when they say if, you're, if it is designed that, okay, your concrete um, for uh, the mother slab, the grand slab, it has to be 30 MPA. The consultant will give you, for you to achieve 30 MPA, this is a cement requirement, this is the sand requirement, this is granite requirement. If you follow that requirement, you are going to meet it. And the specifications still say that when you follow those requirements, take your cube test and go to the lab. Okay, go to the lab and ensure that that particular requirement is met. So where did it stop? Is end to end, primary, primary oversight, secondary oversight, but they are all expectations and specifications. So right from the government to the consultant to the owner. Everybody have a role to play. Okay. All right. Um, with the time that we have left, I, I would like that you um, share with us the questions that the Lagos state government should be asking um, to get to the bottom of this. Um, who should be, you know, questioned? What questions should be asked? And what, you know, are the things that should be looked into um, with regards to this in incident? Yes. I mean, the government have taken the right step by... Uh, bringing uh bringing in uh bringing in a committee okay bringing in committee you know and it's going to be consistent of professionals okay structural um structural consultants people that have experience uh, in the industry so that's what that's like what is most uh what is most important yes okay because everybody have their own area of expertise for instance the geoethnic guy they are going to take samples of the soil and and actually go and reevaluate. Then, from that, they will know. Oh, okay. This um, what do you call it? These um, these piles are not deep enough. Okay, the piles are not deep enough based on this soil test. Are they loose soils? Are they loamy soil? What is the CBR ratio of the soil? You know, is the foundation right? So all of this, I mean, is very very deep. Is very very deep. So all of these are going to be put um, they're going to be put into consideration in the course of uh, you know in the course of uh, their investigation. So it's not what we can just say. Okay, it's just going to be one person. It's going to be the committee. I want to believe we involve concrete technologies, structural engineers, you know, architects, um, geoethnics, um, you know, that is the soil engineers. And all of that so everybody will face their area of core competence and they are going to agglomerate the reports and come out with the total um the final findings okay well we would of course uh, continue to follow this uh, story um as it develops mm -hmm. and of course um we're looking forward to bringing you back when more questions emerge that need to be to be answered uh collins balogun a concrete technologist thank you very much for spending your time with us this uh, thursday morning and of course, I'm sure that you also you wish much. that uh, there's more people found, you know, in that rubble alive. Um, and of course, we end this somehow, some way on, on, on a good note. Thank you very much once again. Yeah, hopefully. Thank you very much. Absolutely. And this is where we will be uh, wrapping up the conversation this morning. It's a really, really sad event here in Lagos. And we will continue to follow up and of course, give you updates as uh, often as they emerge uh, right there from uh, ECOE. If you missed out on any of the discussions we had this morning, remember where to catch up. It's simply at PLOS TV Africa on Facebook and Instagram. Same with our YouTube channel at PLOS TV Africa and the PLOS TV Africa Lifestyle. 
I am Osaogi Ogbonwa. And I am Messi Bupo. Do have a great Thursday.